The desire to return to Monkey is an ideology that spawned many eras ago, ever since our ancestors evolved into the humans we are today. With each passing moment, this desire is exacerbated, even leading to many people to attempt the arduous path of returning to Monkey. While few have achieved enlightenment, it is all for naught, as the rest of society will never follow through. However, if you truly desire the return, then I have the game for you. Ape Escape is a long forgotten game about, you guessed it, apes that, uh, uh, escape. The whole story is a result of our good old professor, insert name here, creating a helmet that increases the wearer's intelligence. I'll be real, I've played this game so many times that I still don't know his name. In other words, it makes you realize that spending your life savings on 2D wipings maybe isn't the best idea. For reasons unknown, one naughty monkey named Spectre gets his hands, arms, appendages on the helmet, and immediately after wearing it, learns about his rights and becomes a monkey supremacist. Sick of being circus monkey, he breaks free from his tent and proceeds to release his fellow brethren. Forewarning, the English dub is hilariously shit. What's going on here? What are you planning to do? But if you find that charming, you're gonna enjoy a lot of the cutscenes. Following those events, we arrive at the beginning of the game, with our protagonists, Jake and Spike, racing to the professor's lab. Upon their arrival, they witness a bunch of monkeying around, and get caught in a time machine accident. Immediately after, Spike wakes up in the land of dinosaurs, and is tasked with capturing the monkeys that traveled along with him. Meanwhile, as Spike is taking care of all the monkey business, the professor and Misty receive a call from Spectre, and he swiftly taunts the two of them by revealing his goal to rewrite history with the monkeys as the rulers of the world as opposed to humans. Worried, Mr. Professor attempts to persuade Spectre to return the helmet, claiming that it's too dangerous, but fails as he rolled an at one. As a final lap, Spectre reveals that he captured Jake and brainwashed him to become one of his minions. Now the story bits are spaced pretty far out from each other, so in the meantime, why don't you enjoy this trip through time and witness the elegance of my monkey hunting. Splish. There is elegance in failure, keep, keep that in mind. Newly informed of Spectre's devious plans from the professor, Spike decides to continue his journey through time to capture those damn monkeys. And what journey would be complete without robbing a pterodactyl nest? There's a lot to be done and- HOLY SHIT IS THAT A MONKEY RIDING A T-REX?! In only a short period of time, the monkeys IQ increased from flinging shit at each other to becoming terrorists and assaulting us with guns and bombs. If Spike is to catch the rest of the monkeys, he needs to be smarter, as well as implement new tactics. And we forgot to account for the wildlife. Fuck those birds! And fuck you! You, you stupid electric catfish! As the layout of the land changes, along with the monkey's ever-growing intelligence, new gadgets are acquired. They've already been introduced to the lightsaber and net, but the most important gadget, allowing Spike to fly, is next. That's right, a slingshot. With this new gadget, new heights are able to be achieved, uh, with a bit of practice, of, of course. After capturing the last monkey in the Funky Wonky Mystery Zone, our long-lost rival appears just to challenge us. Due to our bulging muscularity, we make light work of him and smoke him in a race. Right after, we unlock our next essential gadget capable of accessing the speed force, a hula hoop. With the spinning ring of death, we can now capture monkeys even faster, so strap in and witness our ascension to obliterate yet another monkey. Passing through a few more time periods, we arrive at my least favorite level in the game. For real, I hate this place. The layout isn't the problem, but just the sheer disgust I feel whenever I have to go through here is immeasurable. Like, what in the hell is this thing? Anyways, after we hastily get the fuck out of there, we end up in the next time period, the Ice Age. Baby not included. Taking care not to freeze our ass off, we eventually acquired the next gadget, something to rival the Great Slingshot. That's right, the Whirly Twirly. As we continue disturbing the peace of these happy monkeys, we can't forget to take advantage of the fact that PETA hasn't been created yet. After whacking a few polar bears around, we encounter our self-proclaimed rival once again. In yet another race, we use our dominant arm to twirl that whirly around, just like how I did when I was... You know what, maybe I won't finish that. Just like last time, our bulging muscularity carries us to the finish line on the first try. <coughs> on the first try! Thanks to that <laughs> easy victory, 
We acquire the strength of a weed and enter a hidden leaf village. Witness a substitution jutsu here and there and unleash our ninja way all over these monkeys. And we can proceed to the next area, the Great Wall of China. Capturing the last monkey here brings us enlightenment. And with that, we are finally able to track Spectre down. As we try not to get lost in his castle, we still have time to dive on some monkeys along the way to the throne room. And waiting for us there is none other than... SHIT! WRONG MONKEY! Okay, a bit more hunting later, and we finally unlock the secret hideout, and our first boss fight. Anyways, after showing the knight that size doesn't matter, we emerge victorious and get yeeted back into the present. After falling for over 30 minutes, Spike arrives just in time to witness monkeys going bananas all over town and terrorizing the residents. Spike then rushes back to the lab only to discover that Professor What's-His-Face and Natalie have been abducted by the monkeys. With the help of the professor's AI girlfriend, she gives us a rundown on what happened while we were away, as well as a plan of attack. Back in action, we clean up the streets from those monkeys and dive straight into the sewer, which has surprisingly clean water. Afterwards, we make a trek over to Spectre's factory and disrupt more of its plans by exposing the unethical work conditions in the factory, as well as the hundreds of OSHA violations scattered all around. Why is there so much lava here? What the hell? To end this long day of capturing monkeys, we get to head over to Skyscraper and throw hands with Spectre yet again. After demolishing his ugly ass and his yee-yee-ass flight machine, <coughs> Spectre directs us to the final area of the game, the place where it all began, the amusement park. Here, we'll find all of our friends in Spectre's final hideout. Moving on to the first area we visit, the haunted house. But in order to get there, we first need to hop on an iron death trap. I don't know about you, but I'm not the biggest fan of roller coasters, so I hope you enjoy this section of near death thrills. After surviving the sadistic torture chamber, we run into a Cajun app, who turns out to be a lot more bitchy than she appears in her victory screens. Anyways, we make our way through the haunted house while actively committing hate crimes against those stupid ghosts. Anyways, you know the drill by now. A few captured monkeys later, and we're able to save Nat by dropping her ass on her ass. As for the next area, we walk into a giant circus tent, where we can be glad that we aren't the biggest clown in the room for once. The first thing we notice is none other than our lovely professor. After a short talk, we skip the entire level by using our trusty old slingshot to ascend to the top where a peculiar fellow kindly waited. Anyways, give that clown a good old tombstone power driver, shove our big, long rod up where the sun don't shine, and free the professor from his cage, even receiving some compliments in the process. Last on the list of people to save is our self-proclaimed rival, Jake, who has been patiently waiting in the vroom vroom room for our final showdown. Actions speak louder than words, so watch as we let our hands do the talking and beat his ass one more time which knocks the brainwash right out of him. Since Jake got his cheeks clapped too hard, Spike sends him back to the lab where he can ponder all of his life decisions up until now. With everyone saved, our final goal is to defeat Spectre. After making our way to the floating castle in the sky, we trigger the most hype song in the game. Anyways, like usual, we continue our rampage as we capture as many apes as possible while traveling through the final dungeon. With a little bit of determination, we make it to Spectre's secret room, and one final attempt to persuade Spike to join the side of the monkeys commences. Of course, Spike refuses, which causes Spectre to go bananas and try to brainwash him. But through the power of God and anime, Spike resists and the final battle ensues. Making light work of Spectre, Spike defeats the multi-phase mecha and emerges victorious, but not before Spectre slips away one last time. After a short celebration, Spike decides to continue looking for Spectre, but first, he needs to go back in time and capture the remaining monkeys terrorizing the timeline. Going back, he unlocks the final gadget, the Magic Fister, capable of beating, uh, er, breaking through even the hardest materials. After speedrunning all the previous areas again, the professor locates Spectre, and the real final battle can begin. Starting with a heartfelt conversation, Spike once again fails to convince Spectre to turn home. So, instead, they agree to throw hands one last time. Side note, just when you thought the bangers were finished, the game decides to play one last track during the battle. And it is straight gas! For a game that was released 25 years ago, the composer really knew what he was doing when he made this game soundtrack. Back to the fight, we only need half the gadgets at our disposal. It's just like the previous battles with Spectre, just keep blasting his ass until he comes down, but this time, we actually get to jump this little shithead. After taking Spectre down from his throne, we can use our magic fister and obliterate his asshole for the last time. 
Once he's down and out for the count, it's time to whip out the good old reliable and catch him for good. Let the credits roll one more time, and that's the end of Ape Escape. While there's a few things that haven't aged well, the game still managed to provide a solid experience all these years later. There's just a certain charm about the silliness of this game, and its designs remind me of why I'm still fond of this game as an adult. So, if you're trying to return to Monkey, I hope you give this game a chance. Anyways, I'm Julius Sky, and thanks for dropping by.